you know, Marlon Brando is one of those guys where where when you when you're talking about him, you say his first and last name, but then when you break it down, you're like, yeah, his first name's Marlon. That's that's such a good point. There's no like because he went by Marlo at some point, right? Oh, what a goober! One, yeah. two, three, four. These boys only want the best. Of, they want the cream of the crop. They don't want none of that microbation. They want the shit that pops. Oscar bait, black and white. Maybe something French. If it's got more than one explosion, honey, put that shit on the bench. Oscar Wieners. Oscar Wieners. Oscar Wieners. These boys are the Oscar Wieners. Yum. Welcome to Oscar Wieners, oh, the only show yes. on the internet where Hollywood's biggest night. Go to bed a contender. <laughs> Go to bed a contender. <laughs> I'm Marlon. <laughs> See, your your impression was actually, it was pretty good. Mine is more like if he became a smoker. Because you go Marlin. raspy. I go, I can't help but I lean into uh, Roz from Monsters, Inc. It could have been a contender. <laughs> Isn't that, it I think... Me. Oh, that's that's like the the receptionist, like yeah. behind the yeah yeah yeah. Mike Wazowski. That's that's really good. <laughs> Thanks, man. You forgot your paperwork again today. Hmm? And I'm Roz. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I'm Michael. Think? He's Ander, and yeah. this is a podcast where every it is? week. <laughs> this, this, believe it or oh not. Oh my god, that's crazy. Uh, cool. This is a podcast where every week we pick a best picture winner at random across all of history and time. Everything. And try to figure out if it was worthy of such an esteemed honor. And today mm-hmm. we're, we're talking doing about... a book. <laughs> today we're talking Moby Dick. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> yes. Um, Today, uh, we're talking about 1955 Best Picture winner, On the Waterfront, uh, yes. directed by Aaliyah Kazan. Um, he's back. Covered, he's back. <laughs> like, in just two episodes, we decided <laughs> to talk about this guy again, because he made us tickle so much with the Gentleman's Greek Agreement. Freak. On the Waterfront, you got Johnny Friendly, you got Charlie the Gent, you got Terry Malloy. <laughs> They're all E's. Derry, Johnny, Bobby. This is Bobby. This is my niece. This is Shirley, and this is my pigeon Swifty. That's just Nobody... how it goes in Hoboken, New Jersey, man. I guess like no one was named Charles or anything. Even today, well, if, no if it was named. Charles, people were like, "Hey, Charlie, get yeah, over here." Yeah, you you would have been Charlie. Actually, his brother's name is technically Charles, but it's Charlie, right? Charles the gentleman. Charles the gentleman. That's, that's what it see, says on his nice. birth certificate. That's nice. So Terry Malloy, played by Marlon Brando, is a ex prize fighter. Um, what does he do? Like, I get he works on the docks, and I kind of just left it at that. But I don't really know what his job is. I guess he like unloads ships. Yeah, that's what longshoremen do. I think. I think okay. they just like they, they all they yeah they unload ships. Yeah. Um, but he's also low key in the pocket of the mob. Right. Okay. So Brando. The, the, the Longshoremen's Union of Hoboken, New Jersey, has been taken over by the mob, run by Johnny Friendly, played by uh, Lee J. Cobb, corner otherwise. <laughs> um, and Johnny Friendly's right-hand man is Charlie the Gent, played by Rod Steger, who is Terry's brother. So Terry is given like small assignments because of his relationship, like his sort of tangential relationship to Johnny friendly. He's, he's given respect. He's given an easier lifestyle on the docks on the other workers. Good old Terry's got work. Um, Mm. And the move, the movie starts like immediately, like 
So the basic the, <laughs> the basic, movie starts as soon as it starts. Once the once you had play, the movie starts. It's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. That's, um, that's that 1950s tech. No, I just mean so. So the basic plot is, uh, uh, or the basic setup is Terry. He is asked by Johnny Friendly to uh, get this this guy. He's another longshoreman. Get him up. Get him up on the roof of his building. Yeah. Figure out a way to get him up there. Um, and because he's like gonna rap to the cops, I think about Johnny Friendly. I don't know if he's going to rat or like he knows too much or he's been talking to somebody like not necessarily the cops but like I think maybe he was just kind of a weak spot in their operation. He knew too much and they were going to rub him out. Right. Um rub him yeah. out. Okay. Yeah, they're they're okay. going to rub him off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's what I was I was they're worried gonna... about meaning that and saying another thing. Um uh Terry just thinks that they're going to like they're gonna like he rough said, him up. Is rough him up, thinks, yeah. but instead they throw him off the roof, at the roof, and he dies. Um, <laughs> Joey and so, Tribbiani, come on. <laughs> and Terry so is. Don't, don't do that. <laughs> Let it Ross. Let it <laughs> Let it Ross. <laughs> um, he, I don't know how close he was with Joey. I guess they were like friends slash acquaintances, but he does feel guilty because he didn't think they were gonna kill him. And, yeah. and now Joey's sister is like completely heartbroken and trying to figure out who is responsible for for joey's uh rubbing nah i'm not gonna say that joey's murder i guess yeah so so eventually uh joey's sister um edie played by eva marie saint um and carl uh father barry played by carl malden yeah he's like you know what i am gonna He's like, I am going to clean up these streets as a priest. Single-handedly. <laughs> it's like, all right, bro, you do you. Yeah. Um, so along the way, uh, Edie and Terry spark up like a romance, um, which which deepens Terry's conflict because obviously Edie is the man he had killed sister. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. Um, a movie ensues. Um, and she has like a, she has like a, she has a, a, a certain moxie a sort of yeah a well, fighting she's, spirit she does have moxie well she's everything that he's not or at least that he maybe used to be because he used to be a prize fighter that was him when he was a quote-unquote contender um and i think sh- her persona reminds him of his former self he's like she stands up for what's right she speaks out against injustice he's like i'm not that guy and i think they kind of i think that's what draws them together that's a good point, yeah. And she's she who, she's wants who to... he wants to be. Yeah, totally. Yeah. That's how I saw it. Then Father uh, Father Barry, he, like, sort of gets the longshoremen who aren't chosen for, like, this specific day's work. He's like, meet me in the basement of the church, and we'll... He's like, I'll, I'll prove to you that I'm willing to take take this, like... Yeah. Activism all the way, speaking out against the, the corruption on, on in the within the union and on the docks. Um, yeah, yeah. The whole then, the whole dock worker philosophy is that they they pretty much know what's going on. Like they know the mob controls the union. They know a lot of things that maybe they're not supposed to, but they all shut up about it because nobody wants to get got or be accused of being a rat. I guess they meet in the basement of the church, mm-hmm. and you know when that scene happened, Father Barry was rounding up the guys. I was like. Oh, it's like a secret meeting, and then like immediately the next scene is like, "Hey, these guys are having a secret meeting," and it's like, "Oh, I guess like nothing can really get past Johnny Friendly." No, um, I mean it shows how much power and influence he has. Like he knows what's going on everywhere, pretty much. He's, yeah, he's omnipresent. Yeah, he is like God. Whoa, symbolism? Question mark? Maybe, dude. Wait, movie's so fucking sick. That's man. awesome, man. That's sick. Or is he like the devil? Because he's obviously like a bad actor in all this. And then Father Barry's like, we got to take down the devil. He's in our docks. He's on our waterfront. And, and I just want to sit on the dock of the bay <laughs> watching the tide roll away. <laughs> roll away, yeah. Um, That's all he wants. Yeah, so Johnny Friendly, you know, he gets word of this meeting. He's like, hey, Terry. Terry's like, I don't want to do it. He's like, Terry. <laughs> 
It's pretty good. <laughs> go down, go down to this basement, and basically be a spy. Pretend like you're there, uh, you know, because you're interested in like rebelling against me, which is like kind of stupid. Because I'm like, everybody knows that Terry is Charlie the Gent's brother, who is your right hand man. Like why? Like he's not gonna fool anybody. I don't think that was the idea. I think the idea was co- to kind of say like, to like send put the a pressure message, on like, Johnny Friendly's listening. Gotcha, so you gotcha, know, gotcha. So y'all that makes know. more sense. That yeah. makes more so, sense. So like nobody better sh- say anything even at this meeting. Right. Um, but somebody does. They bust the mob comes in, busts the whole thing. Um, they beat a bunch of people up. Terry didn't know Terry is kind of throughout the whole movie, he's like he didn't know the mob was gonna take it this far. You know, like Johnny Friendly will ask him to do a small task. And he's like, all right, I'll do this small task. It's not going to hurt nobody. But then it ends up hurting a lot of people. And that's why he's guilt ridden. Yeah. Um, I really want to get to this scene. Then we can kind of just talk about thoughts about the movie. We could still cool. go through the plot and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Go for it. But so there's that meeting. Yeah. The Like you said, Johnny Friendly's goons come and break it up. They beat up a bunch of guys. Uh, Edie ends up escaping with Terry. And then... They go for a walk in the park and (laughs) and they start talking and okay. Up until this point, I liked the movie a lot. I was enjoying it. This scene and Marlon Brando's performance, I was like, oh, I see why this is like one of considered one of the best movies ever made and why this is like considered one of the best performances in all of film. Mm -hmm. He is so fucking good in this movie yeah it's he insane is. he it's is insane really yeah he plays he's it's like one of the most human performances i've seen maybe ever or at least in a long time he like because he fluctuates so hard between uh between being loyal to like being conflicted about being loyal to uh johnny friendly and his brother and also like wanting to do what's right he's he's charming he's mm-hmm. like very sweet but also like because then he eventually he goes on a date with Edie right. and like because he's like you ever have you ever had a beer right I bet you I bet you I bet you never had a beer have you <laughs> and so they go for a beer she's she's in a nunnery right she's like practicing to be a nun yeah she's in like she's at like yeah yeah um and in that scene he's like he's like she like takes a sip of the of like a shot she he's she's like it's good. He's like, no, you gotta, you gotta huck it, lock the whole thing. Back. <laughs> yeah, she she has a shot of like whiskey or something. She's like, mm. it's it's such a good performance. It is, yeah. Like you really feel the human conflict within it. Like you want him to be good and to turn over a new leaf so badly. Like yeah. he's clearly not too far gone. He's not too far indoctrinated into the mob. Like he can still be a contender, you know. And you want Edie to have that good influence on him. Yeah. But he's also loyal to his brother who's involved in the mob, too. So you can see where that, that conflict um, reigns true. Yeah. Um, Definitely one of the more interesting parts of the movie. Marlon Brando is really conflicted because there's, there's the Waterfront Commission. Who are basically yeah, they're like, like cops, but not cops. They're, they're like, like Waterfront Police. Yeah. And they're trying to bust uh, Johnny Friendly. Um and they're leaning on Terry to give them information, but he's not giving it, giving it. And so this other this the uh something Dugan. This guy this guy Dugan, he's one of the longshoremen, he works with Father Barry. He's like, All right, I'll 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 be a canary, I'll sing to the this water the waterfront commission. Yeah. Um But they have this guy killed, like Johnny Friendly has him killed while on the job by just a, a big crate, like crates of Irish whiskey, which is Don't the you irony love is, don't you just love like the cartoonish ways that the mob will kill people? Because like I guess guns would like leave traces and it's not quiet. It can't so be like everything an accident is accident on paper. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Everything is an accident, quote unquote. Like they drop yeah. crates on somebody or they'll run you over with a truck yeah. know, in an alley or something. I thought it was right. all the creative ways that they invented to kill people I thought were almost charming, actually. <laughs> <laughs> it actually was... really endeared the bad guys to me. <laughs> I thought, look at these Looney Tunes guys right here. This is just a Bugs Bunny Daffy Duck moment. And um, it was nice. 
<laughs> yeah, it is. It is funny. Uh, especially because like that guy, he really wants Irish whiskey. He's like, hey, can we get some Irish, a shipment of oh, Irish whiskey? That would be better than whatever. And then they get it. A good observation. And I he's forgot. immediately killed. Yeah. Instantly. Like, but he's he gets what he wants <laughs> and then they kill him for he it. He is comically killed. Like he's just. The scene is five minutes long, and from the outset, you know he's about to get got. Like, he's standing in the middle of this large open space, and, like, crates are, you know, circling around above all of them, and he's standing by himself, and he's just, like, totally not paying attention to anything, and you're like, this guy is, like, this guy is a pancake that I see before me. Like, he will yeah. be a pancake in seconds, and he was. Yeah. And even, even later, so, like, after he's killed, Father Barry gives, like, this really incredible monologue about like two Best scene. The, all all the guys are up at the top like johnny friendly's up top like watching all of it and when I, part i love father barry's like the dynamic between the mob and father barry because it's like they won't mm-hmm. kill him because like he's a man of god and like yeah. that's like that's like a that's like a uh What's the word? They're still religious, the mob. Right. They're it's like a, it's like a, it's a line they can't cross. Yeah. Um, so he kind of the Father Barry is like I have this kind of soft shell of immunity that I'm going to just see if I can push to its limits and like see what good I can do in getting these people out of our community. Like Father Barry is pretty legit. Like that whole yeah. monologue is all aw- Who's the actor? Uh He's Carl a- Carl Malden. He was awesome. He was so good. That monologue was amazing. That that yeah. was my favorite part of the yeah. movie. Uh, if you don't want to watch On the Waterfront, that's fine. But I would go and look up Father Barry's monologue and just check it out. Even without context, it's pretty awesome. And then he, him and uh, another guy, I forget who. But like, so the, the, the thing they used to bring down the crates of whiskey. Yeah. The crane. The, the se- yeah, the crane. The scene ends with Father Barry riding that up to get out of, like, the hull of the ship or whatever. Yeah. And I was like, they could just, like, cut that rope and kill Father Barry. Like, I was like, Father <laughs> Barry is really confident that they're not going to, like, just kill his ass. Well, yeah, that's his mo Like, this whole movie is his moment of, I'm going to do something. Right. Like, that's why... That's actually why I, like... It's Edie, right? Edie's yeah. the sister. I like her as a character because she has this immediate impact on all the people she encounters where... Oh, that's... Yeah, yeah. She inspires everybody to go above and beyond to do something about their community, which is nice. That is really nice. Yeah. Uh, that's true. I didn't even think about that. I, You know, I also... I love that uh, in Father Barry's monologue, he kind of implies that Jesus was a union man. <laughs> yeah which he was <laughs> let's be real he's like jesus is here with you on the docks every day <laughs> the lord is with you he's not unpacking the boxes but he's just rest assured there were two sets of footprints on the, the docks <laughs> that day <laughs> if jesus was still here he would fucking be out there like fucking yeah. talking talking shit about bezos <laughs> God, yeah, we need we need Jesus back. God, we need Jesus back, man. Um, and then and... Father, <laughs> there's that scene where Terry is like kind of he's like getting ready to 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 set aside his mob life because he loves Edie, and you know Edie is not about that. So he's talking to Father Barry, and Father Barry's like, "You should tell Edie that you're with the mob." What is it that he? Oh, because because so Terry tells Father Barry that um he was kind of responsible for Joey's death, right? Which he and was. He, he tried telling Edie that when they went out for beer, but like, what happens? She like doesn't. It's not that she doesn't believe him. I for, I feel what happens. Really, he doesn't. It doesn't seem like he really tells the full story. Like he right, he doesn't like come out and it. say it. Yeah, yeah. He's like Joey and I, yeah, we were kind of close. Whatever. Yeah, but like they've they've raised pigeons together or whatever like they flew pigeons they're both pigeon heads <laughs> like they got a whole they got a whole hey arnold-esque like you know the pigeon man episode they got that yeah, whole, yeah, yeah. a bird flu whatever not the bird flu that big bird cage yeah yeah they don't have um, a bird flu but they keep a lot of pigeons on top of their building a coop is that what you're thinking of <laughs> yeah that was what i was such a yeah thank you this is why i need you no problem man um, but but he, he 
Terry goes and talks with Edie, and Father Barry's watching, and, like, you see their conversation. He's, like, he finally tells her about his involvement with the mob. And, and Father Barry is so, he's, like, looking at he's, like, Terry, he's really turning over a new leaf. I'm so proud of him. <laughs> and he gets shit on so hard. <laughs> He Edie runs away. Over, she's like, like you like, monster. <laughs> which of course, like he's yeah. he's in part responsible for killing her brother. Like why wouldn't she be upset? Like yeah. he was like, yeah, she's going to love me even more cuz I'm being open and honest with her. It's like, no, she hates you now, dude. You suck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was kind of funny. Yeah. And then he goes back to her apartment and like borderline assaults her, which was not cool. Yeah. Right? She won't let him in her apartment, and he, like, breaks down the door and, like, yeah. is, like, screaming at her to, to take him back. It's so uncomfortable. He was channeling us, his his other character, Stanley, in a fucking a streetcar named Desire. Ah, uh, yes. Um, I remember it fondly. Yeah, and he, like, forces a kiss on her, and I guess the yeah. kiss must be so good that she changes her mind completely. I hated that so much, because that's yeah. exactly what happened. I think in the Broadway Melody episode, you say, like, were people, did people not like this? Or were they, like, patting you on the back and being like, he's a persistent fella? <laughs> I think that's what they thought. Yeah, break down the door. He's persistent. That's good. That's husband yeah. material. So finally, after Father Barry and Edie's influence, Terry's like, you know what? I'm going to fucking rat on Johnny Friendly. Well, no, no, no. Yeah. He's still torn. And then, but he's, like, leaning towards ratting and oh yeah and then and the, the the scene it's one of the best it's like you know one of like the two or three best scenes in the movie is the scene between johnny friendly says to charlie de Gent, Ch terry's brother he's like hey you gotta talk to your brother because like if if you don't get him to you know chill out we're probably gonna have to kill him so this is yeah. it's kind of do or die um so charlie the gent picks up terry and they have this scene that is so well performed. It's it's mm. the it's where Terry gives his you know I could have been a contender. Uh, it's not really a monologue, but it's a few lines. Um, it's good. And like Charlie the Gent, uh, who plays him, played by Rod Steiger, Steiger, Stewart, he, Rod Stewart. <laughs> <laughs> Great performance by Rod. Yeah. Every picture tells a story, <laughs> don't it? Um, so. <laughs> Like when Terry is like, oh, I don't know. I don't know, Charlie. I don't know. <laughs> he pulls a fucking gun on him. And it's, and it's so like, painful. Just, he's like, just do it, man. You're, They're going to kill you. And then <sighs> and then Terry like kind of shoes the gun away. And Charlie just like sits back and is like, I just pulled a gun on my brother. Like, what the fuck are we doing? What have I done? But he also knows he kind of pulled the gun on himself, too, because they're going to off his ass. Yeah, he's like, I know I can't. You know, I pulled a gun on Terry, which is bad, but also I know I can't, you know, obviously kill him because I love him. He's my brother. Yeah. Uh, which means so, that I'm going to get killed. Spoiler alert. Sorry. Charlie gets got. And it is sad. It is sad. Uh, and that's basically what. That what puts Terry turns, over the edge. Put Yeah, exactly. Puts Terry over the edge. Brando is pretty restrained until Charlie gets killed. Yeah. And yeah. he's like, I'm going to be a contender. What does he say? Yeah, he's like, I'm going to be a contender for the well, rest of Well, in that whole scene, like, the idea is, like, that's what's also so good about that scene is uh, the car scene between Charlie and Terry is Terry is like, Charlie, do you remember that, like, famous fight that I had at Madison Square Garden? You told me to throw the fight because Johnny Friendly had money on the other guy. That I was fighting, and like you yeah. facilitated that, and like That's you're you you're realize. partly you're partly why my life never changed. Yeah, and that's when you the realize, moment it like, could have. What is you bet against me? Right. Yeah. Right. Um, which is so deeply, profoundly sad. Yeah, for sure. Um, and Marlon Brando plays it like a goddamn Godfather almost. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost as if no. Was he... Wait, sorry, let me... What are his other movies? Oh, he was in... He is... Superman's dad? What? <laughs> <laughs> that's where. That's what seems so familiar about this performance. Yeah, <laughs> he reminds me of fucking Jor-El. Well, <laughs> well, no, doesn't he play... He's Lex, right? Isn't he Lex Luthor? 
No, that's uh, fucking Gene Hackman. <laughs> <laughs> you can't. You, you look in this podcast. You can't really get more than like two or three moves away from Gene. <laughs> Damn it, <laughs> Gene. Gene is ubiquitous. <laughs> He is, is, as you said earlier, omnipresent. <laughs> um, this is where I think things take a turn for, I don't like what's happening here. I, this is my whole take with the movie. I'll okay, think, I think I think I might be exactly on the same page. Go ahead. When, when Terry's running around with the gun, I'm like, this dramatically makes sense. But when he's like, actually, I'm going to dress in a suit and testify in court. I'm like, what happened? This movie had so much life and vitality. Now it's a little bit goofy. I actually feel the exact opposite. I think, well, I think the issue is with the morals of the actual story. Like, Terry testifies, and it's like, like, this is his brave act. He's testifying, like, he's sitting alongside all of the mob members that he used to work with. Like, they're, and they're just staring daggers at him the whole time, and Johnny Friendly threatens him in the courtroom. He's like, I'm going to kill you, kid. You're going to be six feet on the cement shoes, all that stuff. Yeah. But Terry, he testifies. He tells them everything, tells the court everything he knows about their operation. Says they're not legit. They're bullies. They, you know, they shouldn't be controlling the union, which obviously they shouldn't be. But, and it's, in my mind, I'm like, that's a huge win, right? Like, I thought that was the climax i thought that this was like things wrapping up like terry finally stood up for himself and his fellow dock workers testified in court but everybody hates him they think he's a rat yeah like that was what i guess it's like the gritty dock worker mentality or something like the, it's the mob like they bully you every day but it's like nah you don't squeal like what the hell is that <laughs> mindset i just couldn't wrap my head around that yeah even e- oh my god pigeons i was so i was sad. just gonna say that i okay i wrote in my notes that kid is a fucking sociopath he's a like child. i'm so i'm so mad at terry for ratting that i'm gonna kill all of his birds strangles them to death you one a maniac? by one <laughs> you psycho yeah it's like a 14 year old kid you're gonna be hitler one day Are you yeah nuts? literally like what are you talking about like oh my god i just and you even know what? the I... cops even the cops escorting him to his apartment like he gets a police escort from the courtroom and the cops are like shouldn't have squealed you rat pig and they're like and he's like what the hell <laughs> yeah um i guess like to me the the last 20 minutes just become a little bit boilerplate like they kind of lose their specificity which i was really into inj- like loving about the movie mm-hmm. um what it almost becomes ki- i'm just in the position where i've seen 70 movie 70 years worth of movies that have been inspired by on the waterfront mm-hmm. so like the sort of triumphant ending where like eventually he beats the shit out of jo- well actually he gets the shit beaten out of him by johnny friendly's goons which right. is like unfair. Which, like, aren't you? Uh, yeah, unfair. But also, like, he gets the shit kicked out of him by Johnny Friendly too. Yeah, like, I was you're like, a boxer. Why isn't he... Yeah, I wanted to. Yeah, totally. Um. So there's that, and then like, but then like he stands up and walks through like the the shipping doors, and then like the union, the all the the um, longshoremen members like back him. I thought it was a little bit goofy. I think I agree with you. I think it was a little bit lost on me. Maybe it was just lost on me. Like I wasn't fully grasping. I it was well done. Like the scene was well shot and performed yeah, and yeah, structured, yeah. but like I didn't like that it was like it had you had he had to have this macho conclusion where you know, he comes down, he storms down to the docks, he's going to demand work, you know, even though he shouldn't be showing his face anywhere, and he's going into Johnny Friendly's territory. But I would argue that his his show of just violence, like pure physicality towards Johnny Friendly, I think it did less for the workers' movement than him testifying. I think him testifying was actually a thorn in Johnny Friendly's side and was a big push. And then he does this, he he's does this to send a message when he goes down to the docks. And it doesn't really seem like it would actually add up to anything meaningful in terms of change. 
yeah he's like you guys can't push me you can't you can't basically run me out of my own neighborhood yeah um terry he, that's why he goes down to the docks <laughs> shout out to yeah. terry man shout out to terry I, the ending feels like a little bit didactic it's like now yeah. now now terry is a hero and <laughs> it's the, so the union is saved and yeah so a little it didn't feel kind. real like the whole yeah. movie was trying to go after this this grit this realism and the ending just didn't feel realistic at all yeah or it felt like like if this movie continued on for another 15 minutes i think the reso- the epilogue to this movie would be like Nothing really changed, actually, and Terry just went back to work, and the mob still controlled everything. Right, right. You know? Like, I think that's what would have really happened. Yeah. I mean, this was real, right? Didn't this actually happen? Or something similar? This this is... So, the script was by Bud Schulberg, um, but it's based on, like, an actual, like, piece of journalism where somebody uncovered mob control of a labor union um Mm -hmm. on the docks of i don't know if it was i don't know if it was new jersey but yeah okay i mean i think i agree politically with the ending i'm like yeah maybe i don't think mobs should control unions yeah I, (laughs) i don't believe in corruption um you know a little historical context okay this movie is Aliyah kazan's defense of a real thing that he did in his life a few years before this where so he was he was a communist Aliyah kazan okay but then he was like actually i'm not a communist anymore and because this is this is you know during the blacklistings of like hollywood people who were communists they were like kicked out of hollywood they were kicked out of you know whatever sure red scare yeah Aliyah kazan ratted on eight uh friends and colleagues who were communists in Ooh. Hollywood with him uh and this Yikes. is his defense movie this is this is him expl- like ex- trying to explain why he ratted because it was the right thing to do and uh. i don't think communism is the same as a mob running a union <laughs> and like keeping people from working and like manipulating them yeah no i don't know what he's trying to say it seems hypocritical right he's basically he's basically like i'm terry I'm actually like a really great guy for ratting out these people who like weren't doing anything wrong, but believing something a little bit different. And also I'm Jesus and I beat up a guy on a dock once. Yeah. And Uh, everybody cheered and it was awesome. And I was revered and I was cool again. So will you like me now? Give me an Oscar. And they did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's the kind of historical... It's like the sort of background that like leaves bad taste in your mouth a little bit. Where you're like, I don't... This movie is like a complete farce then. Yeah, that taints it a bit. Because that is farce-like. Yeah. Because, you know, that's hypocrisy. Like, it, it's... How am I supposed to trust the message of the movie when its creator is not abiding by its own message yeah or twisting the message to meet his own personal life right right but as far as the movie do you like this movie (sighs) here's the thing (laughs) here's the thing you know every time we do one of these and you're like talking about a movie positively i'm like oh maybe andrew really liked this one then we get to final thoughts and you're like that was like a six out of ten i'm like what are you talking about Here's the th- I mean, like, I do like this movie. I, I think it was an okay movie with a few great scenes in it. And I don't really know where to... Where, where, like, where that sits, you know? I, 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 I wasn't totally... I wasn't sucked into it. Like, the sting at one point, like, grabbed me and pulled me in. This movie didn't have any of that moment until Father Barry's speech... And then it lost me again. And then um, uh, Terry's conversation with Charlie in the car pulled me back in. And the last scene is gripping too, but it didn't hold that. It, it didn't sit well with me in terms of the messaging. It so like while it, while it was a cool yeah. scene right. cinematically, I just didn't I just didn't think the message rang true. I thought he was much better off testifying even though cinematically that's not necessarily that interesting 
I think it would have been a better resolution for the story. The movie part of this movie was really good. I think the storytelling part had some missteps. And it's hard. It's hard to write a story that's consistent throughout. It's really hard to do it. And I don't think they totally pulled it off. Ending a movie is really hard. It is really ending anything. Ending a is story, really hard. ending a thing is really yeah. hard. Um, yeah, I ju- I find it very interesting. I find it very gripping. Um, I I I like. I, I think it's almost unspeakable how good this performance is. Like I I I know I'm hyping it up a lot, but I think it deserves to be hyped up. I think. Yeah, but I could I could have just seen Marlon Brando do a one man show on a stage somewhere, and it would have been just as good. You know, like I think he carries a lot of this movie. And I think without him, it's not as strong. There's this. There's a moment when he's walking through the park with Edie, where he drops, where Edie drops her glove, which I don't definitely wasn't scripted. But Marlon Brando picks it up. Terry picks it up, <laughs> and he just like I think he puts the glove on. Yeah, which is like a silly little thing, and I'm like, that's like, that's like such a that's. I mean. I don't know. That's not great. It's not like. <laughs> All right. So I, I blow want my you, mind. He put I a glove on. I think he was a great a scene. I want you to be doing a scene and, and then put like on a something, glove. Something yeah, I might. Accidentally, and then you do it spontaneously and pull it off and make <laughs> Maybe it seem I like it's part of your character. You know what? Well, it's like show. everything else I couldn't do, but the glove part, maybe. I think that's the one thing I could muster is I would impromptly, impromptu put on a glove. Did he win best fuck, actor? Fuck you, man. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Did he win best actor? Uh, he did. Deservedly so. He won best the actor gloves. against Oh, Humphrey Bogart was nominated. Wow. Bing Crosby, the James Mason. Dan O'Hurley, he ever Ooh. heard of him? No. <laughs> I um, haven't. Who won best picture other than this who won it best picture nominees on the waterfront one you said it's a stacked class right oh uh, it's a bad bad class on the oh, waterfront bad class. Like probably, like... probably the only good movie that was <laughs> oh okay um let me get a taste Let's other nominees at. include the cane mutiny <laughs> shut up ever heard of who's it who's naming these films <laughs> ever Why heard they... of it Every time we do this, I'm like, they can't name movies any worse, right? And they lower the bar. I haven't heard of it. No, I guess Humphrey Bogart's in it. Don't I? I feel like I've heard, I feel like I've heard of it. Uh, I don't know. I don't know anything about it. Uh, other nominee, like uh, the Country Girl. <laughs> oh, You're making this up. Uh, nope. Okay. Well. Next up, we have Seven Brides for Seven Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> Ever heard of it? No. <laughs> no. Stop asking me. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And the final nominee is Three Coins in the Fountain. <laughs> Saul C. Siegel is the producer. Not even (laughs) kidding. (laughs) Come on, man. Who's naming these? I gotta see what Three Coins in the Fountain's about. (laughs) I don't want to know. Can I get... You know what? If I had to... I don't don't even want to guess. It's probably... It just sounds so lame. Three American roommates in Italy wish for the man of their dreams after throwing coins into Rome's magnificent magnificent Trevi fountain. Trevi? Trevi. Frances, a secretary at a government agency, sets out to win the heart of her smooth-talking novelist employer. Anita, her co-worker, defies office regulations by romancing an Italian who works at the agency. An office newcomer, Maria, meets a real Italian prince charming and falls madly in love. The only thing the three hopeful ladies need to do is seal their fate. That sounds <laughs> what is that? fine, I guess. But... It sounds fine, I guess. There's a way better title for that than Three Coins in the Fountain. <laughs> it's just that's just blow after blow, man. That's gonna that's gonna I'm gonna I'm not gonna sleep tonight, I don't think. Like hi somebody came up with that, right? Like hire I'm hireable. 
get me to i'll just write movie titles i don't care what you're don't even tell me the plot i'll just how about just not how about trick or treat the movie boom that's already exists really yeah (laughs) shit um that was all i had actually michael doherty movie this is kind of this is not this is not easy i have one shiver me timbers i would watch shiver me timbers it's not about pirates take three coins in the fountain and just call it shiver me timbers it's about a corn dog stand at a mall i like that in in middle america (laughs) let's get this let's get jerry bruckheimer on the phone let's get this thing done (laughs) those are the fucking the nominees i can't imagine anything was better than on the waterfront you want to do you have any uh people's reviews enos says one star on the water fart hashtag (laughs) steward which not bad not bad enos uh five stars vin diesel was right this movie's an all-timer oh yeah vin diesel for <laughs> sure loves on the water and then, then i was like well wait how do a lot of people reference vin and i was like how do people know vin loves this i was trying to find a quote and i did find a quote so vin diesel says what was <laughs> this reviews from vin diesel what was bizarre when i was younger i never watched actually <clears throat> let me take that again what was bizarre when I was younger, I'd never watch TV. I'd rather watch a movie a hundred times than to watch a TV show, just to find another nuance. I can't tell you how many times I've watched On the Waterfront, just to find a flaw so that I can learn to try and improve my thing. Vin Diesel. I feel like that was more Stallone than anything, but... Yeah. The, the message rings true. I don't know so where he, he said it. He's basically saying it's a flawless movie. Vin based he's another guy that based basically his whole performance on Waterfront which I could see I mean Dominic Tourette Ter- like he Dominic so what I love about Vin Diesel is his reach at, uh exceeds his grasp he re- Diesel yeah he, you know he's never gonna be a Brando okay but he really wants to be and I was, honestly I admire yeah. that effort yeah me too this one is all this one's from the rock this one's from Dwayne. uh he says in which the catholic church is dot 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 good and in a fun way oh yes my dad does a good impression of marlon brando in this movie you should ask him about it if you ever meet him i'm sorry who said that this is the rock Dwayne johnson gotcha Dwayne or otherwise Dwayne or otherwise yeah do you think do you think his dad is Dwayne the boulder johnson oh that's so cool that seems like I would. It seems like you got that from somewhere. I feel like that's not all. Is that all you? Out of my head. That's pretty sick, honestly. That's an Oscar for me. That's an Oscar for for you. Nice, cool. Uh, are we done with this episode? Yeah. <laughs> Andrew, it has been a pleasure talking with you about yeah. on the waterfront. Maybe we should meet for a little nightcap on the waterfront oh, that would be lovely that was what's missing just a little no one had a little nightcap <laughs> yeah uh next week's episode we're talking 1984 best picture winner terms of endearment written and directed by <laughs> james l brooks a Ugh. movie one of my favorite movies really yeah it's movie right Rex. okay i've only seen it once though so maybe i'll watch it again and be like this sucks <laughs> We'll see. We're gonna have Jack to Nicholson out. plays a horny astronaut oh, Nicholson. with a big belly, and it's nice. really good. I'm Tune in. in. I'm in. Uh, all right. See you next week, farters. <laughs> One, two, three, four. These boys only want the best stuff. They want the cream of the crop. They don't want none of that Michael Bay shit. They want the shit that bops. Oscar bait, black and white. Maybe something French uh-huh. If it's got more than one explosion Honey, put that shit on the bench Oscar Wieners Oscar Wieners Oscar Wieners These boys are the Oscar Wieners This shit's about to run out <laughs> in the nick of time dude that was masterful that was beautiful uh, thanks man